Okay, we'll get started. Um, welcome to How to Save Money in Taxes, Leveraging Retirement Accounts for Business Owners. Good afternoon, ladies. Our hearts are so full with your presence here today. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, and our goal is to maximize the time that we have with you today by not only sharing tax saving strategies with you, but also guiding you on the steps that you can take to implement them into your business. Um, and we'll kick this off by introducing ourselves. Then we'll share why today's topic is important for business owners. Um, we'll go over your retirement account options as a business owner, how you can implement your plan of choice into your business business, um, and next steps on how to engage Yessi and I on your journey towards saving money and taxes. And then lastly, we'll close out with a poll just to get feedback on additional webinar topics. Um, and that should do it for today. So um, hello, my name is Tori Sierra. The main reason why I am here today is to help female entrepreneurs of color um, that uh, I've been heavily influenced by my strong line of matrix in the family, my late grandmother's inspired uh, inspire me on the daily with their grit, resilience, and undeniable confidence and their flashiness they live their lives with that inspired me to create a life that I love and to help other women of color create the lives that they want for themselves and their community. And that starts with making well-informed decisions when it comes to your business. And I am Jessica Lemos, uh, but you can call me Jesse, and I am a first-generation a female entrepreneur that, to be honest, just ended up in the journey of entrepreneurship by simply being at a career fair at the age of 21 and needing a job badly <laughs> post undergrad. Um, I am, but I am extremely grateful for 21 year old me, not only for embarking on this journey, but really seeing it through because as a first generation female entrepreneur, jumping into entrepreneurship was kind of like learning a new language. It was new, it was foreign, and it was unspoken of in my world. But hey, here we are. Uh, so I am really excited to be a resource to women that are also fighting to see it through and not only launch their business, but really take it to the next level. Um, so we're excited to align our practice as financial advisors with our passion to empower female entrepreneurs of color to own the power in their money. The goal is not only to implement these strategies, but also execute um, growth strategies that will help business women create generational wealth. Um, and as financial advisors with our independent broker dealer, um, that is the Terra Investors, we have access to a couple of things, a lot of things actually. Um, we have access to a wide, range of investment solutions that help us develop a strategy that fits your needs. Everyone's situation is very different, so we definitely need a variety. Um, we also have access to an independent market research and insights, advanced technology, uh, regulatory oversight uh, to ensure that your investments are well monitored, and guidance and training from knowledgeable consultants um, that help us uh, with our clientele. Now, um, hosting educational webinars uh, for female entrepreneurs is one of the many ways that we aim to be resourceful to our community. You'll also be able to find upcoming webinars like today's topic on our website, and that's yesiantori.sutarinvestors.com. Um, and you'll also find our podcast, Money Talk with Yesi and Tori, where we share stories of challenges and triumphs in entrepreneurship as uh, women of color. Uh, we've discussed topics such as reframing imposter syndrome for women in business, that was a heavy one, um, having the courage to charge for your worth, um, and many more. Uh, we also have a blog and an events tab uh, where you can find local community events that aim to empower women-owned and operated businesses, um, and you can also stay connected with us, of course, on our Instagram page, that is Yessi and Tori. Now, I am going to start us off uh, with discussing an upcoming deadline that will apply to any business with more than one employee in the state of California. So the state of California has established a retirement program called CalSavers. This retirement program is meant for workers that don't already have a retirement plan available to them through work, 
Um, so if you have more than one employee in California, you must be offering a retirement plan of your own in your business by 2025, or you will be required to enroll your employees in this program, in the CalSavers program, which to be honest is, is a bare minimum. And, uh, but we know as business owners and as women of color, we don't do this a bare minimum, <laughs> right? Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we want to make decisions that use accounts that are going to enhance our business and not just stay by with doing the lease. So that's why today we're going to educate you on four retirement plans that are available to you in your business to save some money in taxes. Now, the big question is, what are the benefits to sponsoring your own retirement plan outside of CalSavers? Well, with CalSavers, um, there are no employer contributions allowed, which means you can't use you can't use it as a tax deductible event for your business. With your own retirement plan, you are allowed to have employer contributions, which means that we're able to implement tax management strategies with these retirement plans that can help you lower your tax um, your tax liability and increase your after tax return. Um, so that's the um, main reason why we're able to use the tax strategies with these accounts. Now, why is it important for business owners? Um, now, we're not saying that health savings is bad. Um, we just want to make sure that you are aware of your options and not being forced to implement a program um, by the state of California that does not fit your business. Our goal today is to educate you um, uh, and business women like yourself on additional retirement accounts available to you and plans that will help you keep more after-tax money in your pocket that will pour into your business, that will pour into your community, into your family, wherever you want it to go. Um, the second is to build generational wealth for you, your family, and your community, and help you, it could also help you retain higher, um, high-quality employees. So those are some of the benefits um, to you. Now, what you look for when you are deciding the right fit for your small business retirement plan. Like I said, we're, we're going to go, we're going to cover a, a variety of them. So this is how you know which one's the best fit for your business. One question you're going to want to ask yourself is how many employees do you have? Are you a sole, are you a sole proprietor? Um, is it just you and yourself? Do you have under 100 employees or do you have over 100 employees? The second question is, what is the goal of offering a plan? Are you looking to maximize contributions for yourself as the owner or for highly compensated employees, like as an incentive for them? Are you looking to provide an employer benefit to current employees, again, to help keep that uh, retain, uh, increase your employee retain ratio and or help uh, to recruit new and retain existing employees? The third question is, are you willing to provide contributions to the plan for your employees? Um, and lastly is, do you want to offer features like loans, vesting um, of employee contributions, et cetera, which these are quite common in some of these plans that we're gonna cover. But we're gonna start us off with um, a very known type of account, um, and that's the traditional individual retirement account. Um, short is traditional IRA. So that's gonna be the first one we're gonna cover. Now, this type of plan is best fit for someone that's just starting out, right? Someone that just launched their business, um, they're able to start this plan. The reason is because you don't need to have employees. It could just be you, yourself, and your business. And the contributions are as little as you want. Um, however, there is a maximum limit. So for 2023, the maximum amount that you can contribute to the plan for the year is a total of 6,500. Now the tax advantage part of this is that the money that you put into the plan, you're able to use it as a tax deductible event for your income. Now the benefit to you is, like I said, you really don't need to have employees to open this type of account and you get the tax deduction, get more money in your pocket at the end of the tax season. 
Um, but the downside is we are limited. You are limited to that how much you can put in the plan, which is 6,500 uh, for this year. Now, moving on to the second type of account, this one is called the Simplified Employee Pension IRA. Essentially, you're independent, can create your own pension here. Here are some of the features of this plan. Uh, the first one is, again, it's a simplified employee pension plan. Um, it allows for tax deferred growth of the money that you put in as it is accumulating interest, as it is compounding interest, it is growing tax deferred. All contributions that you make to this plan are immediately vested, which means the dollars are yours. Um, now, no plan level restrictions. Um, there's no plan level restrictions on withdrawing money from the plan. Um, it's low. It actually has no administrative costs, um, which we'll talk about in comparison to some other plans. Um, it's available for any business type, including nonprofit and government organization. It's actually pretty easy to set up and maintain, and um, it's a great last minute planning tool to run to as tax season comes around. And you're like, I need something. I'm going to pay way too much. Um, I need to hide money somewhere. This is a great tool uh, for last minute contributions to run to. Now, this is the best fit if you have zero to just a few employees. The contributions that you put into this plan are employer contributions only. Um, the employer contributions can be between $0 um, and the lesser of, this is gonna be really important, um, and actually go over a, a, an example, but um, it, the lesser of 66,000 or up to 25% of um, your after-tax employee earnings, right? So you're gonna wanna, Find out what your after-tax employee earnings are. Take 25% of that. If that is higher than 66,000, then 66,000 is your limit. But if it is lower than 66,000, then that is going to be your limit. Um, now, the tax advantage here is that the contributions that you make to this plan are tax deductible from your business income, right? And now the benefit to you is you have a higher contribution limit compared to the traditional IRA that we just talked about, which was 6,500. Um, now the downside here is your employees cannot contribute. Like you said, it's only, um, it only allows for employer contributions. Um, you must contribute the same amount for your employees as you do for yourself. Um, now there is an example here so we have an example of someone that's 55 years old, they're earning uh, 40,000. And like I said, how much can they put into the plan? Well, it's gonna depend. Um, we're gonna take 25% of their after tax employee earnings, 25% of 40,000 is 10,000. So then therefore they are limited to 10,000. The 66,000 only comes into play if that 25% was higher. I'm going to pass it on to Tori and she's going to move us forward here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. Um, so our third plan is the solo 401k. And this is, this allows you to the opportunity to maximize business deductions because it has a higher limit um, compared to the traditional IRA. Um, you also have Roth contributions available in the solo 401k. So if you want to not necessarily get the tax deduction today, but grow tax-free income in the future. Roth is an option, and we can go more into detail about what exactly that means later. Um, you also have IRA rollover flexibility. So um, you can roll this plan into an IRA once you this plan no longer suits you. You can roll IRAs into this plan from old employers. Um, it's pretty flexible. And you have the ability to take out a loan and consolidate other retirement accounts if you want to. So um, compared to a traditional IRA and a SEP IRA, you're able to take out a loan from this one. With those other two, you are not able to. So with a loan, you can pay, essentially borrow against yourself and pay yourself back. So it makes it a little bit more flexible. Like obviously we wanna keep money for retirement um, 
for retirement, but if for whatever reason you want to leverage what you've saved so far, you can access the money in this account. Um, business owners can contribute to a solo 401k both as the employee and the employer, and a spouse can, can be added to the payroll as well. So you have mucho deductions there. Um, so it's best for if your only employees are just you or you and your spouse. So sole proprietorship, LLC, S-Corps qualify. Um, you can make contributions as both the employer of your business and an employee of your business, as I mentioned earlier. And as an employee, you can contribute, um, you know, as little as, you know, $50 into the plan, all the way up to $22,500 if you're under the age of 50 um, and anywhere in between. And as the employee of your, or the employer of your own business, you can contribute an additional amount. Um, you can also write off your contributions as an employee, employer, and for your spouse as an employee. So that's three ways that you can write off contributions into this same plan. And the benefit to you is that all contributions that you make as an employer will be tax deductible to your business. Contributions that you and your spouse make as an employee will reduce your personal taxable income as well. Downside, not much. This plan is actually really nice. Um, but once you have one employee other than you and your spouse, you cannot contribute to this account any longer. So that's when we would um, maybe shift from this account um, to look at other accounts that might make more sense since you have employees. Um, so we'll go through an example. So we have Mary and John. Um, Mary is age 55. John is 55 as well. Mary's annual earnings is 162,000. Um, she chooses to max out her solo 401k at 22,500. Because she is over the age of 50, she can add an additional 7,500 for the catch up. And then, so that's her wearing her employee hat, right? And then if you switch over to her employer hat, um, she, as the employer, put in 43500 And that gets her to the max that she can contribute as an employee, an employer over 55. Um, so that max for 2023 is 73500 which is 45% of her pay that she's essentially hid from the IRS in a very legal way and put into her 401k for her future retirement. Super nice, right? And then we also have John, her spouse. His annual earnings is 50,000. Um, he's also chosen to max out with the employee salary deferral and the catch up. And then the employer also put in $10,000. So he's taken 80% of his pay, 40,000, and put it into the solo 401k also. Um, you know, so total, they have over $100,000 that they've been able to reduce their taxable income by and save it for later for their retirement. So this is a great tool for someone who's in business with their spouse or just on your own. Um, the fourth retirement account is a defined contribution plan. And this one in particular is the Safe Harbor 401k. So um, first, just to get the definition kind of like out of the way. The reason it's called a safe harbor 401k is a safe harbor is a legal provision to reduce or eliminate legal or regulatory liability in certain situations as long as certain conditions are met. So it's a way for you as the employer to protect yourself and offer this plan for yourself and your employees. Um, so you can have your employees add in their own contributions, but you as the employer are required to match employee contrib uh, contributions using one of the following options. So the first option right here is a 3% non-elective contribution to all eligible employees. So regardless of whether or not your employee decides to contribute on their own, you, no matter what, as the employer will save or contribute 3% of their salary on, on their behalf into their 401k. So that's one option to uh, satisfy the safe harbor requir requirement. 
The second option is a basic matching contribution equal to 100% match of the first 3% of compensation deferred plus 50% match of the next 2% of compensation deferred. So this actually requires your employee to save. And if they do save, the first 3% that they save, you will match 100% of the first 3%. If they choose to match an additional 2%, you'll match 50% of that 2%, so essentially 4%, right? Um, but that option requires them to save their own money. And then, um, so those are the two main options to satisfy the safe harbor rule, um, or you can do an enhanced matching contribution. So this is just like uh, above and beyond those two options. So for example, 100% match of the first 4% of compensation deferred. So that's an even better kind of like deal than, than the other two. Um, highly compensated employees can defer or contribute up to the maximum allowed. Um, you can offer Roth contributions through a safe harbor 401k. Um, and then all contributions from both the employee on their own and then from you are 100% vested. Um, this is best for typically if you have over 10 employees. Um, and then we reviewed the contributions for the solo 401k. And this is similar for this safe harbor for 401k in that you and your employees can contribute um, as little as $50 up to $22,500 for the year of 2023. Um, it usually changes every year just based on inflation. Um, the tax advantage is that any matching that you do as the employer is a write-off for your business. So you have your own deductions that you get from your own contributions. You have the employer contributions for yourself and then any employee matching that you can deduct from your business income too. Um, plus you also stay compliant with California labor laws, which we like that too. Um, downside is there is more strict fiduciary reporting um, and it's typically compared to a SEP traditional or a solo 401k, it's more costly than those other three account options. Um, so we'll go through an example here. Okay, so this is an example illustrating the 3% mandatory non-elective contribution rule. So this was the first out of the two options to satisfy the safe harbor. So we have an owner and then their spouse we have the names here and they have 10 other employees. We have their salary in the second column, how much they're contributing on their own in the third column, the 3% non-elective, so automatic on your end as the business owner contribution, regardless of whether or not they contribute any of their own money. And then the total of what is going into the 401k, okay? So for you, for the owner, if you're making 100,000, let's say you put in 27,000 for you. And then with the 3% non-elective, 3% of 100,000 is 3,000. So 27,000 of your own contributions plus 3,000 of the 3% non-elective gives you a total of 30,000 into your 401k on your, your behalf and then on your employer's behalf. Um, and then there's also the owner's spouse. So let's say they have 50,000 as their salary, they put in 27,000 um, into the 401k on their own. 3% of 50,000 is 1,500. So total of 28,500 goes into the 401k on their behalf. So then we'll also look at the first employee. So employee number one, they make $25,000 and on their own, they've decided to contribute $2,000 into the plan. And then 3% of their salary is 750. So 750 plus 2000 is a total of 2,750 into their own 401k between their own contribution and the safe harbor match. Um, so looking at number employee number two, this is somebody who's not contributing on their own but still gets the non-elective contribution. So they make 21,000. They've not, they've decided to not put in any of their own money, but 3% of uh, their salary still goes in um, to satisfy the safe harbor uh, rule. So a total of 630 goes into their own 401k on their behalf. 
um, thanks to that non-elective contribution. So you can see, you know, examples of different salaries, examples of different employee contributions, and then the 3% non-elective contribution across the board for each of their employees. Um, on the top right hand side here, this shows the employer mandatory 3% non-elective contribution cost for non-owners. Okay, so pretty much that's just all of the contributions that the owner or the employer has had to put into the 401k on their employee's behalf was a total of 4,545. That's from the combination of all the 3% non-elective contributions. So that is what the employer is on the hook for, right? Um, and that they're being able to deduct from their business income too. Um, and then when we're looking at the owner and the spouse allocations between putting in their own money plus the 3% non-elective, they put in a total of 58,500. Pretty nice, right? So we have kind of like their liability and then their benefit essentially, right? So that's just kind of like a super basic example of what a safe harbor 401k might look like um, in practice. And so first uh, to go through how you implement one of these plans. So first you wanna determine the type of plan that you want to set up based on your business structure. So it's gonna be totally different um, for your business compared to your neighbor. Um, your business neighbor's plan. Um, so make sure that it fits within your business structure. Um, if you decide on a traditional IRA, SEP IRA, or a solo 401k, implementation is a little bit more straightforward. Um, you set it up, you fund it, you invest it, and then you monitor it. Um, so pretty straightforward and pretty um, cost efficient to set up too. Um, if you choose a defined contribution plan or a safe harbor 401k, there are a few other additional steps. It's a little bit more costly, but as you just saw in the example, kind of a, a good way to decrease your taxable income for your business and for yourself. So usually uh, it, it ends up being worth it. It does end up being worth it. Um, so first you engage a third party administrator or a TPA to design your plan. So deciding which safe harbor allocation you want and the overall design of your plan. Second, you choose a record keeper or the investment company that you want to use to fund your 401k. And then third, you choose your fiduciary setup. So like I said, it's um, with the safe harbor rule, there's kind of a lot of reporting and um, standards that you have to uphold when you have that kind of plan. So you'll wanna make sure that you have the right fiduciary set up. Um, and Yessi and I have designated partners for each of these roles and can help you with this. And so once your plan is set up, you'll need to review your plan to ensure that it fits with your overall objective, um, your entity structure and income. And as we know, what being business owners change is constant. So your human capital might change, your cash flow might change, et cetera. So we'll want to make sure that your plan still fits with what you need as your business changes. And then finally, you can use the money that you have just saved in taxes to reinvest back into your business, enjoy your life, um, invest back into other businesses in your community, um, invest back into the community and um, into yourself, whatever you want. So um, those are kind of the, the four or five main steps to implement these plans. Now, I know that we just dropped a, a lot of information, but we're not going to just leave you to have to figure this out on your own. That's what Yessi and I are here for. So next steps, you can schedule a virtual meeting with us to determine which account makes the most sense. Um, you can uh, scan the QR code there to schedule a meeting, and then we will run the numbers on projected tax savings and retirement savings. Um, Yessi and I are here as your strategic partners and financial besties to help you make the right decisions when it comes to saving money in taxes by using the plans available to you. So lean on us however you need to, send us your questions. Um, you know, we'd love to help you in any way that we can.